<clears throat> All right, we're live here at Buffalo Trace Distillery for another episode of Whiskey Wednesday. And today we have Master Distiller Harlan, Harlan Wheatley and Marketing Director Chris Comstock of Buffalo Trace. What are we going to get into today, guys? Well, we got a treat today, don't we, Harlan? Yep, good stuff. Um, we're going to talk about Blanton single barrel bourbon and uh, Albert Blanton himself. It's kind of fitting that uh, we're doing this tasting here in the Stony Point Mansion because Colonel Blanton built this after Prohibition. This is where he lived, right? He and his wife lived here uh, for most of the second half of their life and, and it still sits here on the property today. The, the mansion overlooks the distillery and uh, some of us have our offices up here. I've been working out of this building for almost 18 years now. Um, Blanton's bourbon is something special to me because um, I knew Elmer for a while before he passed and Elmer helped you know, invent Blanton's bourbon. Um, and he knew, probably knew a lot of stories about Colonel Blanton. And Colonel Blanton was, was a young man, he's from Jason Farm, right? Uh, he grew up here and he came to work at Buffalo Trace um, in 1897 and eventually became the president of the distillery in 1921 and we're really lucky that Colonel Blanton was in charge because he helped us navigate through some really challenging times. Right? World War I. Flood. Flood of 1937. Uh, Prohibition. Uh, World War II. Um, thank goodness he was creative and and, and, and a good businessman because those are actually some of our better days and coming out of that in the 40s and 50s were, uh, were big decades for the distillery. Um, so thank goodness for Colonel Blanton and you know Elmer like I said knew Colonel Blanton and he, he remembered when the Colonel would uh, get samples out of Warehouse H to be tasted for uh, single barrels for his own private use for parties and events and gift giving and um, Warehouse H is our metal clad warehouse that Albert Blanton built uh, with this theory right that the metal clad warehouse would help age the barrels faster and better and differently than most bourbon barrels. Um, what can you tell us about how that metal clad warehouse and the dy dynamic works with aging Blantons? We've been pretty lucky that through the evolution of the distillery, we've had a lot of different, you know, buildings built and different, you know, fabrication techniques. And, you know, Warehouse H is no different because it was built with uh, metal clad and the metal clad is uninsulated. And one of the things it does is it breathes a lot easier. A lot of our warehouses, they're all different which supports our variety, but a lot of our warehouses are brick and block and they're, they're um, you know, really tight as far as airflow. And the consistency of a warehouse H as it ages is really good early on in its, in its cycle. So it goes hand in hand with, a, you know, Blanton's because, you know, tip, you know, typical Blanton's is six to eight years old and you know, it, it, it matures well in that warehouse. And all of Blanton's barrels are aged in that one particular warehouse, right? Right. So thank goodness for, for Albert for designing that because we wouldn't have this taste profile, this brand at all if it weren't for Warehouse H. Um, so thank goodness for that. Elmer remembered Colonel Blanton picking barrels for his own use and so then Towards the end of Elmer's career in the 80s, he wanted to develop a brand to honor his former boss. And uh, he named it Blanton's and he came up with this very ornate bottle with the horse stopper to really elevate the bourbon and, uh, and really glorify the bourbon because Elmer always knew we made good whiskey here. And so that was in 1984 and we've been making Blanton's you know, the same way for the last 36 years. Yeah, the package has st stood the test of time. I mean, it's iconic. 
you know, people recognize it, been in, you know, movies, it's been all around the world. Uh, and the pack, and the, the important thing is the bourbon hasn't changed inside. The recipe is the same. Uh, we, we're, we test this and very consistent batch to batch. And, and the, the main thing is it's single barrel. I mean, they introduced that in 1984 for a reason where they can focus on quality. It's all about the taste of the product and you can have total control of one barrel at a time. So it's really, you know, it's like I said, it's a timeless package. It didn't catch on that well right off the bat in 1984. I mean, uh, Elmer used to say, you go around and talk about the single barrel bourbon and Blanton's and how, how you know, everybody should try it and educate people about it. But the feedback that he got was, who the hell's gonna pay $25 for a bottle of bourbon? And, uh, you could probably buy a bottle for five dollars yep, back in the '80s. That's right. You know, it was a commodity back then, and really, what transpired was the beginning of premium bourbon. You know, the beginning of uh, what people thought was premium bourbon, and and the the sector, of course, is the rest is history because everybody in the every every distillery pretty much has a single barrel bourbon nowadays. So you know, he was right, and I think the last auction price that we got for a bottle of bourbon was something like $35,000 or something like that. So, uh, you know, people will pay $25 for a bottle yeah. of bourbon. Elmer was right, you know, in 1984, so. Yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a bunch of questions on here already. We've got, we've got a lot of, you know, a lot of great questions, but Rich Keating says, I was able to compare an older Blanton's to a newer one and noticed a lighter, softer note in the newer one. Is that a single barrel? Uh, yeah, so throughout all this consistency, what we look for is kind of the backbone of those bourbons and make sure that, you know, the taste is there and the quality is there, but they are all single barrel. And what that means is you can distill something today, put it in a barrel, and you're going to get variations due to the, the staves and the wood in that barrel. And, and that's the beauty of a single barrel bourbon is the nuances between barrel to barrel and, and being able to taste those and... That's the fun part about it. Every barrel's different. Every barrel's a slight, you know, Same slight warehouse, yeah. uh, same recipe, a little bit more rye in Blanton's than in our Buffalo Trace. But, you know, every barrel is made up from different oak trees and they're all a bit nuanced and that's part of the fun of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, another question that's relevant to that too is Ronald on Facebook asks, on average, how many bottles do you get out of a barrel for Blanton's? After six to eight years at 93 proof, which is what the original is bottled at, uh, we get about 240 bottles out of a barrel. Um, it varies, every barrel is unique, but you know, typically 220 to 240 bottles. Great. Yeah, and, and I think this is a good segue into, you know, trying some of these whiskeys and bur these bourbons in front of you. Chad Black says, are there different versions of blends? I ask because I'm noticing different colored labels on these various bottles. Thank you. So Chad Black is asking about these three different bottles right here. Yeah, I mean, that's a great segue because that's the idea is to offer different variations of the, of the you know, Blanton's and, and trying different proofs, uh, different ages also. Some are six, some are eight. Uh, and that's what we're going to taste today. We're going to try our original 93 proof. We're going to do the Blanton's Gold at 103. Yep. And then the uh, barrel strength right out of the barrel. Yep. So uh, we get to taste three today, different proofs. The original is 93 proof. And this is what you'll find mostly if you're lucky enough to find a bottle. Mm. So this is the one we're, we're mainly used to having here in the United States is this bottle here. Yep, it's the original, the very first one, and it's typically uh, what we've had here in the U.S. Just tastes like a you know, great classic bourbon. Yeah, you know, it's a rye bourbon, and uh, more made with corn, rye, malted barley, 93 proof, um, you know, six plus years old, really, you know, good balance, and a lot of tannins from the wood, but it's balanced with vanilla and sweetness, and mm. you know it's it's a good all around. 
single barrel selection. And in warehouse H, because it's not insulated, it, it heats up and cools down every day. And, and, and during the Kentucky's four seasons, it's actually interacting with the oak more aggressively, right? So it's getting more flavor in those six to eight years than typical, right? Right, it, it, like I said, you wouldn't want to put a 20 year old bourbon in warehouse H because the, the, you know, it would be overaged, it would age fat too fast. But, you know, it's perfect for a six to eight year old bourbon and, you know, good balance as it ages. It is four stories, so you get some variation on the stories, but, you know, generally pretty consistent for a, you know, six year old bourbon. And on the stoppers, there's a letter on the heel of these thoroughbred racehorses. And, and if you collect all the letters, it spells the brand name Blanton's. But there's no difference in taste between the B and the L or the T, is there? There's not any difference. And we don't hold back letters. We've been accused of holding back letters before. And uh, it is completely random. Uh, but if you save them, each horse is a little different. The letter B is the beginning of the race. The letter S at the end is the guy winning the race with his hand up. So if you line those horses up, it's a complete horse race, which is pretty pretty good. And it's also a good way to sell eight bottles of bourbon, you know. <laughs> it's pretty neat. Yeah. Great. So we have, what's this next, the next bottle we have here? The one with the gold stopper is called Blanton's Gold. You know, the gold edition is a little bit stronger. So we add less water uh, to the finished product. It's 103 proof. A little bit stronger on the nose. A little, bit, a little bit more robust of a flavor. <clears throat> is that, Harlan, you think that's coming from the proof itself? Or is there anything else that would make that taste a little different or on the nose? Yeah, this is a good tasting because we're going from 93 all the way up to I don't, I don't, the barrel strength. Um, and what you get is more flavor in that bottle. It's everything out of the, out of the barrel. So when you put 103 you know, proof into the bottle, you're just, getting, you're just putting more flavor into that bottle. And um, you know, it's, it's, a good, it's a good proof. Yeah, hmm. can we talk about the release here? I mean, uh, where are these available? Which countries and, and things like that? Well, for, for 30 years, Original has been available in the United States. And we, you know, a couple of decades ago, we did the gold and straight from the barrel for some other, country, other countries. Uh, but within the last few years, more and more people have been asking for the gold and the straight from the barrel. And so this summer, we actually produced some for the United States. We've been planning this for a while. You know, it takes six, seven, eight years to age the barrels. Um, and so there's, there's not nearly enough. We wish we had more, but at least there's a chance that you can find the gold edition in America this summertime. And we're gonna do that every year. So if you, if you miss out this year, you know, next year we'll bottle some more gold for the United States. Um, and yeah, it is. I mean, people have been asking, so that's why we, we're listening and we're, we bottled some up. And then the last one we'll taste is straight from the barrel. And this version is 132 proof, I think. And that will be available you know, you know, in small quantities um, this fall. Mm. You know, we only had a couple dozen barrels. And if, without any, any water, after the angel share, there's not a lot of bourbon to, to fill very many bottles. But we're going to continue to do that every year, and we'll, we'll continue to make more every year. So in the springtime, there'll be a, there'll be a release of gold. And every fall going forward, there'll be a re release of straight from the barrel. A lot of excitement, a lot of comments on that. Uh, you know, some folks here obviously hadn't heard that yet. It's the first time they've heard it is on this live, uh, Facebook Live. So a lot of excitement based on that. Um, yeah, so a lot of questions. Is, is Blanton's Gold sold in the U.S. and all these kind of things? So you just answered a lot of that for folks, a lot of those questions. Um, what's so straight from the barrel? What's So is that always different? Is the proof always different? Because it is straight from the barrel, just based on that single barrel, correct? Every barrel's different. Yeah, they'll all be a little bit different. Uh, you know, typically, after about six years in warehouse H, uh, it'll be in the range of 130 to 140 proof. Um, but it, it, it will vary a little bit. I have seen barrels come out of that warehouse at 145 proof or whatever, but 
it does depend on the barrel and where it's located and the summers and the winters and mm -hmm. all those temperatures and humidities and all those things. Well, you're naturally going to get more bigger flavor, right? More more oak. Definitely. Just unadulterated. You know, it hasn't been watered down at all. So it's it's like drinking great, straight from the barrel. Great barrel. Great bourbon <laughs> right out of the barrel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Straight. Yeah. It's the name, straight from the barrel. Um, yeah, so lots of questions on availability and things like mm -hmm. that, but we know we're expanding here at the distillery from create, you know, the still house, the, the warehouses and all that. So maybe give us a little update on, on some of the uh, progress on the expansion. Yeah, we, we've talked a little bit on previous updates, but we talked about the still house that we're doubling, uh, the warehouses that we're adding a warehouse every three or four months. Uh, we're building a new dry house. We're adding cooling capacity. We doubled our fermentation capabilities. Uh, we more than doubled our cooking capacity. And all this is designed to continue to produce more bourbons. Uh, you know, we look back on Blanton's and we've, you know, produced 20 years ago, we were producing 18 times more, you know, more Blanton's today. Than I we remember when Blanton's was $40 on the shelf and it was collecting dust Yeah. 20 years ago. And, you know, now you can barely find it um, and it's a lot more expensive. But we literally have 18 times more yep. barrels of Blanton's today as we did two decades ago. And There's a lot more, it just doesn't feel like it because yeah. it, it disappears so quickly. But we are putting more out there, and we're, you know, we have a really, really, uh, at, you know, long-term vision and plan to continue to grow and, and make more, and it's all about more whiskey for us, and, and, you know, we're investing, we're putting our money where our mouth is and investing millions of dollars in our expansion to be able to do that. Yeah, that's great, because, you know, people love the brand, they love the whiskey, and they want more of it and more available, and, you know, so we do get a lot of questions about that, so I think there's no doubt that there's more coming every year, there's there's more and more, so that's great. And if you and if they haven't seen it, they can look back at the older Whiskey Wednesday lives where we cover all those expansion videos, mm -hmm. so. Um, so any last thoughts? We're, you know, we usually try to keep this between 15 and 20 minutes. You guys are busy. Um, any last thoughts on the brand or what you're tasting or anything like that? And I'll try to, I'm going to go over some of these questions to you. In a minute. I'm thrilled that people love it as much as we do. I mean, hopefully Elmer and Colonel Blanton uh, appreciate what we're doing and they you know, respect the, you know, the whiskey that we're still making today and because really it's, it's honoring them. Right? And so, you know, every bottle of Blanton's we make, you know, honors Albert Blanton. And, and if it weren't for him, we wouldn't be here. We we'll continue to make whiskey. Yeah, I agree with you. You know, Elmer would be proud to see, you know, the state of the business and the state of Blanton's and how we're taking care of the, you know, future. And, you know, all the people that work at Buffalo Trace Distillery work hard every day uh, to, you know, to make more whiskey and make more bourbon. And, you know, seeing that, you know, come to come to the market and people enjoy it. It's, it's really satisfying and we, we've got more to come. Yeah, that's great, that's great. I think that's that's good news for all the Blanton's fans and, and for me personally, I love it too, so. Uh, well, thanks guys. Um, you know, there's, there's tons of questions. Sorry we can't get to them all, but uh, I feel like we covered it pretty good and, and thanks, thanks for both of you being here. Thank you. Cheers.